Are you having a hard time figuring out what to get Dad for Father's Day? You should check out Row One Brand's Vintage Pictorum Gallery. They have America's best sports art. With over 7,200 historic sports prints, you're assured to find something unique for Dad this Father's Day. Instead of a boring old tie, get him a historic baseball photo taken by Henry High Sandum at the historic Polo Ground Stadium in New York City during the 1894 Temple Cup. Or, if he's an NFL buff, check out the 1963 vintage NFL poster. These are so good looking that you'll be amazed how they turn out. Shop now at sportshistorynetwork.com slash row one and save 15% off your order. I was watching a basketball game on TV over this past weekend and I noticed, you know, the jersey numbers on there. And I was saying, you know, I got to do a little bit more research on the history of the basketball numbers. And boy, was I glad I did because it's a rich history and it's a very interesting one. And it's all coming up for you in just a moment. My name's Darren Hayes, and I know you've heard me on the Pigskin Dispatch talking about football history for years. Well, now I'm on a new mission, a quest to find sports history in other sports as well as football by learning through the jerseys and the apparel and the gear that the players wore and the franchises supplied their teams. It's an educational trip, and I'm taking you with me day by day, player by player, uniform by uniform, the Sports Jersey Dispatch. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Hello, friends. This is Darren Hayes of Sports Jersey Dispatch, and welcome once again to the Pigpen, your place to go through the great histories of games through the competitors and the gear and the numbers that they wore. And we're going to talk a little bit today about some basketball history, and in particular, some basketball number evolution. As we discussed in an early article of the evolution of fabric and materials of the basketball uniform, that the late 19th century attire was everyday wardrobe of the players. It was their street clothes. And the sport was designed for wintertime, so sweaters and loose-fitting trousers and sometimes even some old football jerseys or track suits were worn by the athletes using the game of peach baskets as an off-season workout for their main sport, in particular football. Now, the website of thisbasketballworld.com suggests that the evolution of the uniform was a direct result of the popularity and the rules revisions. The, they say that the official 1901 catalog for the AG Spalding & Brothers Sporting Goods Store offered long padded shorts that ended just below the knee and form-fitting jerseys with a quarter-length sleeves and a sleeveless variant also. And in 1903, the company introduced a specially designed basketball shoes with suction cups on the soles to prevent slippage on the hardwood floors. Well, at the 1904 Olympics, uh, they used basketball as a demonstration exhibition, and with that, the use of the teams dyeing their cotton garments to team colors and being altogether different from their opponents, an advancement of the game of the hard courts. Now, so they were wearing different colored jerseys from each other from the other teams, instead of the drab gray or browns or tans, that whatever their street clothes were. Thus, the advent of contrasting colors by opponents in basketball sprouted from those 1904 Olympics. Now, the use of numbers was growing in many different sports during the golden ages of sports in the 1920s. Basketball is no exception, and the number proved to be helpful in keeping track of the players' fouls. Up until recently, there had been some restrictions on the use of numbers so that the official could report the number of the offender to the scorer's table with two hands. You know, Rule 1, Section 22, Article 7, Clause B of the NCAA Basketball Rule says that the following numbers were legal. Zero through 5, double zero, 10 through 15, 20 through 25, 30 through 35, 40 through 45, and 50 through 55. So you couldn't have anything with a 6, 7, 8, or 9 in it. And, you know, you could use zero or double zero, but not both on your team. Uh, the tradition in high school and college level play has stayed, but recently the NBA has expanded the numerals that can be used. The, say the last uh, three decades or so. The NCAA may need to follow suit in that regard too because there's so many schools that are facing the issue with their only 37 possible player numbers. And For instance, Duke University, they have 13 numbers retired. Michigan State has 9. So when you take you know 9 minus 37, I'm not a mathematician, but that's you know only 28 possible jerseys 
and you got 15 guys on a floor on a team, eh, it gets a little sticky. So I think they're probably going to be like the NBA and expand it to some other numbers. And, you know, the officials just have to get just a little bit closer to that scorer's table and enunciate who the foul is against. An interesting fact that is once upon a time, the single digits of one and two were not permitted either. There was worry that it may cause too much confusion as to how many foul shots the offended player would be shooting. You know how the officials raise up that one or two fingers. Uh, That rule was eventually abolished, allowing players to wear number two or number one on game day. Now, the advent of using replay equipment for at NCAA games and other better communication advancements should provide a way for future hoop stars to wear the integers of six through nine in those levels that we said that they're not legal and yet that are not the NBA. Uh, the college rule also adds that the Arabic modern numbers must be placed on the front and the back and centered horizontally in n- neutral zone. Uh, in the same style, had to be a solid color, easily seen in the neutral zone. The number must be at least six inches high on the back and four inches high on the front and at least one inches wide and maybe bordered in a different color, but not more than a half inch border. So that's just some uh, some advancements in the jersey numbers of the game of the hardwoods. And uh, we're sure glad that you joined us here for that. And we hope that you'll come back for more uh, next time in just a couple days. We're going about three days a week here on the Sports Jersey Dispatch podcast. But we have articles posting every day on jerseydispatch.com. And remember, don't forget, if you like football, pigskindispatch.com and the Pigskin Daily History Dispatch podcast. That's coming out every day as well. So until tomorrow, everybody, have a great sports history day. We're dribbling around and see the shot clock's almost out, so we got to put up our shot and come back tomorrow for some more great sports history. We invite you to check out our websites, jerseydispatch.com and pigskindispatch.com, not only see the daily sports history, but to experience the preservation of great events and people that play the games. Find us on Pigskin Dispatch. It's also on social media outlets of Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and don't forget the Pigskin Dispatch YouTube channel to get all your daily sports history. Pigskin Dispatch is happy to be associated with the Sports History Network, the sports headquarters of yesteryear, found at sportshistorynetwork.com. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. At the Sports History Network, we're all about sports yesteryear, and so we're so pleased to introduce you to Row One, an online memorabilia gallery and shop that brings your sports history to life anywhere. The Row One gallery includes over 5,200 gorgeously reproduced prints of team posters, game program covers, game tickets, advertisements, and more in baseball, pro and college football, pro and college basketball, and more. And any gallery item may be printed in a variety of sizes on wood, metal, canvas, acrylic, or poster paper. And in Row One Shop, check out the thousands more of unique Unique items with a retro and historical designs dating back to 1876, including t-shirts, long sleeve shirts, phone cases, mugs, blankets, pillows, towels, and even shower curtains. Go to sportshistorynetwork.com, R-O-W number one, for access to the full Row 1 catalog and for gallery prints and gift items, plus get a 15% discount off all prints on the Row 1 Pictorum Gallery with coupon code SHN15. Follow the link on the show notes.